than one update. <laughs> All right. All right. So now we can actually get started with time. Uh, timing starts when I press left click on press fire to begin here. In three, two, one, let's get started. So we have this intro cutscene right at the start. Uh, there's a fair few of these in the run, but they aren't too long. Basically the premise of this game is we play as this ex- believe he's an ex-Navy SEAL named Sam Fisher. We get brought on by Lambert to join the NSA as a splinter cell, hence the name of the game. It's basically the equivalent of, like if you know, like think, think James Bond, that's basically what a splinter cell is like, kind of. We don't let any one person know everything, which means we've all got to work together, even though I'll be out there. So yeah, partly because of this cutscene, and another thing you'll see in a little bit, uh, training is actually a very speed, very non-speed run mission. It's not very speed run friendly because of not only is cutscene, but also all these dialogue prompts you'll see throughout the mission. But you get to learn about the game. We're watching. Yeah. Lovely. Where is Lambert? Though? Um, <laughs> uh, it's a lovely two minute opening cutscene and the next six minutes is training and dialogue telling you what to do and we're going to do all of that exactly as intended. <clears throat> uh, somewhat. <laughs> Maybe. This is it, it's entirely intended, I, I promise. Yeah. And yeah, we're just being taught the camera controls. <laughs> yeah, we gotta learn how to use the mouse. You use a mouse in this game to look around. I also do have splits running in the background on the off chance that I PV, which is possible because my PV is bad. <laughs> I just got done watching like four people play this game already today. So there's a little jump I can get there, which I. Oh, I almost didn't get it. <laughs> So you can jump off that ledge to get that t tutorial prompt while Lambert's talking. It's a minor time saver. Oh, whoop. Nice, Sam! You wall kicked the ladder <laughs> instead of grabbing it. It's one of the many wonderful things you can encounter in this game when trying to go fast. I accidentally crouched instead of jumping. <laughs> yeah, these wall kicks are... Wall kicks in this game, they're, they open up a lot of possibilities for you, but they're rather difficult to... Uh... Pull off here. Yeah, so this is definitely yeah. intended. <laughs> I'm a little bit behind here. Staying on this lamp here. It's, it's training on how to uh, not do intended training. <laughs> Just wall kick off these pipes here and then stand on top of all these large walls, have very large invisible walls, platforms way up top on them. And you can walk along them and do a bunch of the training, such as how to put your back on walls and other unnecessary stuff. Yeah, that's not technically out of bounds, but I consider it out of bounds because we're not in the normal play area by any means. <laughs> well, we're technically still in the play area, but we're sort of outside it. Mm, I would call that out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> So you're, this, not, you're not where you're supposed to be. Yeah, so this second part of training is actually pretty good for the speed run because it gives a nice preview of all the speed tech we're using. So how to open doors. Yeah. <laughs> so lockpicks are in a set pattern every time. They are not random, which is nice. So it comes down to just memorizing the patterns for the... Yeah, to pick the first lock is WSD. You have to press each button until the lock moves, and then you move to the next one. Uh, in certain cases, two buttons are used in sequence. You have to hit a different button before you go back and the next, next button. Uh, but that won't come into play until uh, level two. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that what you just saw me do there was the crouch glitch. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how it works, but basically you just press mash the crouch key like this when you're going up to a guard and they won't notice you. 
uh, my guess as to how that works is because since you're spamming crouch, spamming the crouch key, you're constantly switching between a state of crouching and standing up. So the game that has a hard time determining what state you're in in order to determine how much noise you're making so the guards get attracted to you or get alerted. And the, uh, the crouch, if you spam crouch, you uh, reset the amount of time it takes for Sam to put his next foot on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so if you just if you mash it uh, just fast enough to not actually make that actual step, then no one will hear you. Mm -hmm. um, we use that a lot in mostly missions where you just don't want to deal with fight killing guards or just not alerting people. As you might expect, it's very helpful in the game such as this where the focus is on stealth. Yeah, the tagline of the game is stealth action redefined, quote unquote, but you won't see a whole lot of stealth in this it. run. <laughs> oh, it's redefined. Yeah, it's redefined, we, exactly. We redefined it, <laughs> we redefined it so to where cameras, there's no stealth at all. Yeah, there's two types of cameras that the game is telling you about. One is you can't shoot and some that you can. Uh, and then you can avoid cameras just by not being detected there. Um, for your standard stuff there. So, um, I was so, doing a race the other day, and I had it happen where I had tried hiding this guard's body, but then the other guard found it, and I lost 40 seconds. <laughs> um, so let's hope that doesn't happen here, but I put the body in Yeah, all these spot. training areas, if you, if you mess them up, you just... Lambert just comes online and tells you, Sam, that's not the purpose of this training. Let's try again. And then you just go back and you lose... Yeah, on parts where I of seconds. yeah, on parts where I think I might make a mistake, I make a quick save right after the auto save, like right there. Oh yes, there's gonna be quick saving and quick loading in this game, so that we can do a whole bunch of crazy stuff. So if you don't use quick saves and quick loads, this run is like double the length, maybe. It's not double the length; it's just a lot harder. <laughs> oh, you'd offer more safer strategy. Yeah, the quick saving, quick loading feature adds a lot of marathon safety to the run. This allows you to do marathon safety, uh, marathon safety attached to them. Hey, here's the quiet room. You can't make any uh, noise in this room with the uh, the few hidden mics in it. You might be able to Holy see. Holy Christmas! <laughs> Holy Christmas! <laughs> Just spamming the uh, crouch button rhythmically and getting through that room without actually making any footsteps or flight landings on the uh, platforms here. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, once you're done with that room, you get this uh, delicious another minute of dialogue um, that you have to sit here and watch. Welcome to the NSA. Here's Junior Wilkes. Uh, we, I told him a whole bunch of stuff about you. He's going to deliver you to and from places and shoot some dudes. And everything will be perfectly fine. And stakes are really high, so don't die. But fortunately, we have quick saves. Um, so we don't have to worry about death. <laughs> yeah, the, the NSA branded quick saving, quick loading. Yes, that's what makes third echelon the best. <laughs> Reset your own life. So you actually can skip these cutscenes where there's th those cinematic cutscenes by alt-tabbing out of the game and then clicking the door. Sam, oh my god. <laughs> so you yeah, so here's level two here. I think I'm a bit behind. That's <laughs> <laughs> fine. So yeah, the goal here in level nice. two is uh, Agent Blaustein is missing. We're gonna figure out what happened to him. So we're gonna do some parkour. A bunch of residents here. Not really that many combatants. Um, there's a roll maneuver here. That if you can do rolls one of two ways, you can either be in the crouching position when you land from a large jump, drop or a jump, or if you hold down the crouch button you can do a roll while running, running slash walking. Mm -hmm. So here's a burning building here. We're just going to do exactly what Grimm's daughter says except like a few seconds in advance. Um, <laughs> we're going to find Gergen Idze here. He's a guy who's in the know. He'll tell us about 
Agent Blaustein. Um, unfortunately, um, he appears to be dead or dying. Chat with him a bit. Okay, he's dead. <laughs> So there's a dead drop for us. We're gonna go find that in part two of level two here. That's uh -oh. here. There are combatants here, so that. I meant to sneak up on him. I'll just retry that. I guess there I'll are combatants shoot. here. It takes a raise. Don't don't get uh -oh. shot. There we go. Getting headshots with the pistol is really tricky because the aim is awkward. Yeah, so the uh, aiming reticule, if you see the if you see the pistol being aimed, you see there are four triangles uh, uh, closing into the central circle. Uh, if you shoot, you aim anywhere inside the box inside those four triangles. And if you wait, those triangles contract to the middle point and your accuracy Oops. increases. However, Sam Fisher employs a little bit oh of my accuracy. God. I promise I can put in key pad codes. There we go, finally. Third time's yeah, a charm. pads in this game are impossible. <laughs> so sometimes you click the mouse button and nothing happens, and sometimes you like skip a button or something. Yeah, sometimes you it's, get a double it's, it's input like I had there. <laughs> it's not as easy as clicking icons on Windows desktop, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I hate missing a button at the end of a password and having to do the whole thing again. So yeah, we're making our way down to the streets here, because that's how, the, how we're going to get to the uh, courtyard where Gurganidze's dead drop is. And Lambert's like, whoa, these police are super crooked. So, uh, Fisher, um, you can uh -oh. shoot them if you want. Uh, I can make this work. They get shot quite a bit there, but that's fine. There's two medkits coming up that I can grab. Ooh. It looks like you didn't hear Shirkazy's bit of dialogue, so that's good. You can sleep tight. Yeah. If you get spotted by enough of the civilians, they'll activate an alarm, which kind of kind of exacerbates your efforts in like part three, or maybe here if you hang out too long. Yeah, there's two med kits here. You can heal like one bullet for each one one bullet for each med kit, and then you that computer there was a. Uh, Information for Gurganese's dead drop. Lost Cena Madison, they're in the police station, so that's where we're headed next. Just gonna run down this alleyway with all these people in it. Incredibly nosy people here in DC. They need to know every single person who's running out in the street. <laughs> you wanna go for a midnight jog? Nope, who's there? It's an intruder. Anyway. <laughs> Let's just hop over this. Dumpster, and you're into the police station area. I hear mashing. It sounds like you're already in there, but you're like outside for me. So, uh, again, we're doing some more gliding, just mashing the crouch button so you don't actually make steps. Find Blaustein and Madison's body over here in this morgue area or hospital area. I guess it's a hospital. And then so normally I just go in that room and look at the bodies, but I shot that camera for a bit of safety in order to avoid an alarm. Right. So we've seen the uh, cameras looking at the bodies. The camera's going to help illuminate what happened to Blaustein and Madison. So head up here to the top floor. So uh, don't worry about this guy at the front desk. He'll compose himself. These people up here will just let them sleep. I guess they're sleeping. I think they're just really reading really hard or something. Knock this guy's daylight out. All right, we look, uh, hack into the computer. We find out that uh, some guy is uh, find the guy who's responsible to him. We connect him to uh, a license plate here. And that's where we're headed now. We're gonna find that license plate here. And Lambert just said his name. Vyacheslav Grinko. It's a great name. Just say it out loud to yourself. Vyacheslav Grinko. Vyacheslav Grinko. And it, it is not Gringo. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. 
Alright, so we're just headed to the garage, parking garage. We're gonna find his car. Uh, so something okay. I should mention is different missions in the game apply different restrictions. Like this mission where you're not allowed to trigger an alarm. Oh. Yeah, most missions you can only trigger, th uh, you can trigger three alarms and then land will end the mission. Uh, this one is currently one alarm will end the mission, so you just need to avoid having any dead bodies or anyone running to activate an alarm. Yeah. And stuff like that. You can still kill people, obviously don't what kill putting for okay, the mission. Okay, that's But you can't have any Usually alarms. there's a guard down here around now, but apparently not. Yeah, he does something. Sometimes he's down at the bottom of these stairs. Sometimes he's like somewhere near the top. Sometimes he's oh. on his way down. But usually he's on these stairs somewhere. I don't think there's ever been a chance where he's what not What the been. heck is going on? Um... Oh, he's right at the... Um, uh, okay. This will be interesting. Take a seat. <laughs> oh yeah, this happens every now and now and then. They're just I've actually never had that happen before, so that was a firsty. <laughs> they're stuck on the they're stuck in the doors and you just got to get rid of them. And one thing to consider is that if anyone sees their bodies, then you have to go back to a save and and move their bodies. Uh that check is when you're hanging on this wall here on this pipe. If you get past this pipe, then you know that those bodies in that area are safe. There's several areas in this game where it just checks if all the bodies that you've hidden, all the bodies that you've made are actually hidden. If they're not hidden, you get an alarm. Of course, as I said, one alarm is, is the game over. Um, for this part of the offices. This large room is... Uh, Quite a difficult one. Oh. So we're just resolved in killing all three of these guards right here underneath this stairwell here, um, so that they'll all be in the dark. Because again, if oh, you shoot on. them in well-lit <laughs> areas, you get um, game over here. Right, so that's nice shooting there. Shoot this uh, glass up here. This colonel. We'll run and activate the alarm. The nice part about this room is that the alarm is uh -oh. right there. Uh-oh. Um, okay, the sure. Let's do that again. <laughs> yeah, anyway, the point of this room is to get, get that colonel alert so he runs down here to this alarm. Otherwise, you have to, like, Either wait for him to walk down slowly and activate that computer, or he'll go around and do other stuff and waste time. But just having him run right to that alarm is the fastest way to get him to this retinal scanner. And opens the way to the courtyard, and more importantly, removes all the lasers. So we can just like drop down here in the courtyard. Sorry, I said removes the lasers. It turns off the lasers. So there's a new, yeah, one, I believe one there was a there. new strat found for this laser mic conversation, found by a runner named Distro, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> as far as I, as far as I understand, you are just uh, all quick saving and quick loading to advance this dialogue here. Mm -hmm. But I haven't practiced it. Yeah, me neither. So yeah, you're just listening to me. Grab the hedge, please. Thank you. <laughs> Usually, you can grab it at the very edge like that. I was just a bit off. All right, we're going to take this elevator to the seventh floor. There's people in it. We're gonna ask them real nice. 
There we go. We were successful. Successful interrogations, negotiations. <laughs> Stuff. Here's an interesting glitch. Uh, we're gonna lure this guard over by trying the circles. <laughs> and while he's entering the keypad code, we knock him out like that. And he's stuck like that for the rest of the mission. Don't you just hate it when you're trying to input codes into a keypad and someone punches you? You sort of get stuck like that as well. Have someone try it out on you. Hours will pass and you're just stuck like that. <laughs> So this next part here, you're supposed to drop down off this ledge and shoot this guard. Um, there seems to be not really any way to guarantee that you shoot this guard. Um, you just have to make, you just have to hope that you shoot him. As far as I've been able to tell, you just have to just get lucky with the shot. There you go. No problem. I just hacking into this computer. Someone's going to be like, oh my gosh, there's someone in uh, Nikolaj's office. Yeah, you can't skip this dialogue by quick saving and quick loading, otherwise you crash the game. <laughs> Which I learned the hard way. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't think I had this problem. Yeah, I just didn't try... skip this dialogue because these guards out here do like oh, I different things. There's still another guard just outside the office. It'll be fine though. Yep. I'm gonna have to avoid him on my way out. Might have to shoot him. Actually, we're fine. I think it'll be fine. There's usually four guards there, plus the guard that you knock daylights out of. He's still trying to figure out the button, uh, the combination to <laughs> keep those there. Yeah, so there you go. You got information about Nicolaj's. He's been a. Uh, Doing a whole bunch of dic e evil dictator stuff, so now it's time to get out of here. Get more information from an oil rig in the uh, Caspian Sea. Oh, come on. Jump on the ladder. Thank you. So this beginning part is really strange. On the PC version, if you don't move in this way that I just went, you get stuck on a bunch of invisible walls. It's really strange. Yeah. Pretty weird. Just mm. gonna walk around it. But, you get to do more parkour here. Oh, nice. The dialogue got interrupted. Oh, ooh, okay, that was close. I thought I was gonna roll into the ocean. <laughs> so, for some reason, if you fall in the ocean, that's instant death. For some reason, I guess Sam isn't allowed to swim or something. Yes. Navy SEAL Sam Fisher cannot swim. <laughs> because, yeah, stealth game logic. <laughs> quick save and quick going past that dialogue doesn't save any time, by the way. I just did that for fun. Now in the second half of Wild Rig, we'll get real up close and personal with this NPC on screen, a uh, Piotr. There's a pro in this part of the mission, we'll be doing a pretty Im impressive, I'd say, a uh, cool looking. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Cool looking. It's a pr it's a pretty elaborate uh, skip that you can use to uh, yeah. abbreviate the escape cutscene, which happens or the escape. Um, section of this um, area. So it's, it's more gliding. I can hear it from here. <laughs> gliding along the wall. Gliding along the floors. Don't worry. No one can see you against the brightly lit skies. <laughs> yeah, on the 
I should explain that, by the way, uh, which because it bridges into what I was about to explain. So this game has two versions. A uh, version one, which is the version I'm playing on for this run, which is the PC, Xbox, and PlayStation three versions, and the GameCube versions, which is, and and the version and version two, which is the GameCube and PlayStation two versions. Uh, they're split up like that just because the map layouts between the two are very different. And on version two, the the lighting in this mission is very different. It's at night instead of day. All right. Oh my gosh, I cannot get this wall kick. <laughs> yeah, so this is a uh, first half of the manip. You uh, do a running wall kick off this column. You jump up here onto the rim of this uh, fence. And then you jump over here at the end over a vulnerable portion of it. And now you're up here. Uh, you're not supposed to be up here until near the end. Um, so then you shoot this red panel, like oh, somewhere man. on the flat face, and this guard needs to go downstairs. Specifically, he needs to go downstairs, not look oh, downstairs, he has to walk downstairs. Um, it takes... Yeah. It's, it's kind of random. Yeah. Um, it's... The closer you are to the middle of that red oh, panel, the gosh, more likely the you to go down. The bait, he went to the stairs and didn't go down. There we go. Was that my phone? Oh, that was mine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Don't worry about it. I was afraid this would happen. Uh, yeah, so the first half of the manip is to get that guard to go down. And the second half of the manip is to this guard later. cycle. Ah, damn it. So... To note, in this section, there's an entourage that you can't alert. If you, if you alert, Lambert ends the mission, so you have to be a little bit behind them, and they take a little bit to get to their position here on the other side of this wall. They'll kind of wait for you until you get there, and then they'll keep walking uh, through the butterfly effect, not because they know that you're there. Um, but you do have to wait for them to get there, so you have all that time to do that. Uh, well, you have a certain amount of time to do that uh, first half of the manip, and then get back here. So, hey, you split the water and the guards. I like how I out. shot the pipe and he wasn't even phased. Yeah, this this first guard, he's like, in the zone. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the second half of and shooting then, that thing. Yeah, second half of the manip, it gets this guard to stop the wall yeah, again and move into position. And then if you do both halves of this manip, um, the escape sequence coming up in about 30 seconds um, will be abbreviated. And you'll you'll see you'll see coming up here. Just gotta wait for this glass to break. And then Lambert will tell you what's going on. So I think, um, I'm just going to assume that he's talking right now. <laughs> um, so there you go. We're chasing after Piotr. Um, what, you're, what you're supposed to do is you chase Piotr up the stairs, across the platform, then you go down some more stairs, and you jump. he goes into another room. You chase him in the room. The room explodes. Um, you can either walk through the room, or you can shoot the, the pipes of water and put out the tires and attack but um, you don't have to do any of that. If you do the manip correctly, he gets stuck on these stairs between two guards. One is not moving, and one is trying to get past the other. And there you go. And you kill Shulter there, and get his briefcase, and you end the mission. Yeah, so I quick save there before grabbing the screaming. briefcase because there is the off chance that the briefcase can be just out of reach, and I'll yeah, have to go through the cutscene before I grab it. Stairs. All right, here's CIA. Everyone's favorite mission. You can't actually kill anyone here. Um, most people get to this area and they get sort of, uh, sort of hit the difficulty wall in this game. Yeah. Normally you can just kill anyone in this game unless you need to get information from You can't kill anyone here. So mm -hmm. you just have to be extra stealthy here. Yeah, in fact you don't even have any weapons in this beginning section. Yeah. Good thing you got into the CIA before that timer hit zero. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh god. Um, <laughs> I'll just do it this way, why not? So you have to edge along this window, otherwise that guard will get alerted. 
I always seem to have bad luck with that when I look through the window from the side. No. I'd also like to point out that he's using night vision inside the CIA. The CIA is very poorly lit. Well, we'll just say it's a uh, energy conscious CIA. Very lots of dark spaces here that you can use to your advantage here. And it doesn't help that these guards oh also gosh. can't see like five to ten feet in front of them. So sort of run through that lobby there. I'm gonna try the strat that Ice Plug does in this runs where I just go where I just blitz down the hallway. Usually I wait to try to make this more consistent, but I'm just gonna do that. I might get an arm though. Yeah, and sometimes this so weird maintenance good. guy activates alarms. <laughs> There's like two there's two types of guards here. The guards who have guns and the guards uh, the guards who have guns and the maintenance guys. The maintenance guys just activate alarms and again three alarms ends the mission. Um, so usually worry about the maintenance guys because they'll end your mission, but again the guards with guns they can just kill you. So either way, you don't want to get alerted here. Yeah. Hey, you got a gun. Yeah, finally. <laughs> So I'm glad you can use it to shoot nobody here. <laughs> uh, we have our own wave. Way we have our own wave gang around uh, around that later. <laughs> oh, all right. You're headed to the server room to get information about the mole that you're here to track here. So the nice part about this server room is that um, it's the best well, it's the most well lit room in the game. But also, um, there's people behind you and. They have an annoying tendency to block the door that you need to get out of here. Yeah, they weren't in that case, but they did shoot me quite a bit, so I have to be careful. Alright, nice. so, so normally quickly. with that there's a guard in the hallway, but they weren't this time, which is good. And I see ice plug and runs go through the go through the hallway if he didn't trigger or not the hallway, but the metal detectors if he has if he only if he's only triggered one alarm so far, but I don't do that. I usually stick a shock that guard and then go in that room I went in. Yeah, say it's only a little bit of time, the time it takes you to get through that room. And of course in this room, this large room, two cameras and another I guess this guy's technically not a main this guy just knocked him out because he activates him on. Shazam. And here's Char and Charlie is down here. Charlie is like Yeah, let's see if Charlie plays CIA. nice. I'm at really low health. So hopefully he does. Yeah, Charlie's like the worst guy here. He's actually on the phone and he played nice. across Sorry. the room. Um, once you alert him, he either takes a while to get to you or he runs towards you immediately. There's like three different speeds. Yeah, something and I... He's, if he's fast enough, he'll be right behind you as you're trying to open that lock there. Yeah, an annoying thing that can happen with the enemies is they can rapid fire the gun and just kill you pretty much instantly. Yeah, most great. enemies shoot fairly, fairly uh, rhythmically in this game. Uh, sometimes they don't. I usually say they got an ATB reset. So if you yeah. watch Final Fantasy 13 or something like that, they use that. Why have that terminology? Anyway, here's Doherty. He's Doherty is his own grown man. He does what he wants. Um, but he's generally going to run away from you. Uh, you want him to run right down the hallway. Uh, sometimes he runs to the left. Uh, I'll keep track of him and he runs at a brisk pace here. So Ice Plug does a slightly different stack to... here, but I should have the lights to make this safer. Yeah, so what you're supposed to do here is you're supposed oh, to take Gordy uh, to the CIA exit. Oh, this could cause problems. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> oh, what happened? I got caught up in this guard cycle. Uh, yeah, I'm in a bit of a pickle. Uh, let's just reload the yeah, auto just, save. Just go behind this. <laughs> or you can just... You should be able to dodge this guy. Uh, really? Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> that was... I just saw the. I yeah, just let's just the reload the auto save. So that's one instance of one of many possible instances where you can lose several minutes because of dumb stuff like that. You quick save in a bad spot and you end up having to reload the auto save. There was one time where I actually had the game crash, so hopefully that doesn't happen. 
Although it's bound mm. to happen because it's an early 2000s PC game. Yeah, this game is uh kind of old. So this game, uh, if you run this game at 640 by 480, uh, well, to note, all the cutscenes in this game, all the cutscenes in this game run at 640 by 480. So if you don't run at 640 by 480, um, you have to wait for the screen resolution to change before you can watch the cutscene and then skip it, and then you have to go back to whatever Dang, resolution. Is and we just, we normally just run this at 640 by 480 so that you don't have to have a resolution oh, change there. So that um, timed that one well. You... Only took about a minute. <laughs> Yeah, at least Doherty didn't go into the bathroom. Oh yeah, that's that... the thing that you can do. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's... that's usually if the that's usually if the second guard there is standing in the way of when Doherty gets there. Sometimes he goes into the bathroom, which is amazing. Sometimes he goes into the women's bathroom. The... Oh, I grabbed onto the fence. Nice. <laughs> his front acted door. as his back. Nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> that can happen sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty special. Um, I hope you're not a Doherty fan because Doherty will be is not going to be treated very favorably here. Yeah. Shoot Doherty in his foot to get him to to run further down to this gateway here. It's much faster than dragging him all the way here. Yeah. But you can't get him anywhere out past this like fenced area. He doesn't go there, so you just knock him out right there and just walk him the rest of the way. So. You have to get Doherty down these four flights of stairs, but there's guards here, and you can't kill them, like you said. Um, so we need to come up with an innovative strategy for dealing with them. Um, oh, crap. How are they spotted? They were hiding. NSA presence on leg was completely legit. The only problem is you can burn. Correct. Do you shoot him in the face? Yeah. Actually, I think I you were not to kill anyone here. <laughs> Sorry, man. It happens. Is that a, is that like non-fatal? Oh God, he's already there. That could have been Harry. Right. These maintenance guys—they just—they <laughs> do what they want. That could have been Harry yeah, because all, the guard was all already those bullets there. Are non-fatal. Yeah, All those totally. Non-lethal, non um, multiple bullet wounds. <laughs> oh, guy, excellent job, Doherty. Non-lethal. I misclicked and press E. Yeah, it's totally non-fatal. See, it didn't have anything to do with the fact that uh, you just shot Doherty in his face. While Lambert specifically was talking to you about this Nora talking to Junior looks the back. And if you do that. Lambert, for some reason, doesn't talk for the rest of the mission, which means he can't initiate dialogue, which will end the mission. Wait, I'm wondering, and can you actually shoot the guard here at the end? <laughs> because of the glitch? Uh, you can. It's... Mm, I don't do it, because sometimes Junior Wilkes and Baxter do something weird. Nice. <laughs> I had to do that for a bit of swag. Get to zoom in on Wilkes. What the... Oh. Okay, I guess if you shoot him, the ending dialogue doesn't trigger. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. Let's zoom in on Junior Wilkes. No. She's fine. The blackout's proofed her, but she's completely alright. Don't get too emotional. Let's get out of here. I didn't know which one it was. Like, either, like, either they're just like, someone stop him. They're like, pretending like they're with the CIA or something weird happens. Alright, Kalina Tech. Once you get to Kalina Tech, you can shoot a whole bunch of people, but they all have high powered guns. And. Well, I guess they're not high powered. They have, this they have section guns. can be kind of scary <laughs> because you are exposed to these soldiers while you're going through that window. Yeah. So one of the things in Kalina Tech is you're trying to you're trying to make sure that you manage your health. If you let your health get too low, you're gonna end up making more reloads and well, I mean, you're just man managing your health. You don't wanna die. <laughs> you don't wanna save with low health. You wanna yeah. just wanna keep your health up high. So you wanna minimize the uh 
Yeah, because my health is really low right now, I'm gonna have to get another med kit. If my health was high or even full, I would skip this med kit I'm about to get. They're shooting the computer nerds. I'm introducing the wall mine. Uh, the wall mine, when it is green, you can do whatever you want to. When it's red, if you're moving, it blows up. Um, this might be kind of scary because I'm not You can also health, shoot it. We're fine. You can also shoot the wall mine, blow it up, potentially. But for the most part, we're just going to run past all the wall mines in this game. And we're not going to do that for the next next two down here, part two. As Lambert says, is two computer hackers over here trapped behind two wall mines. You, again, if you agree, if it's red, you have to not be moving, or you have to. You can't be moving past a certain speed. So you can either walk to them, or you can stop. I usually, I do the run and stop method. Uh, we're doing the the walking method. Terrible four here. It's like four guards here that you gotta shoot in. Oops. Oh my god, nice quick save. <laughs> oh no. That was my bad. This? So that was another example of the keypad giving me double input. Well, at least you didn't quick oh. save yourself into like an explosion or something. Oh yeah, that wasn't bad. I, I, thought, I thought you were like quick save while you're like. Rolling through this fire here. So yeah, that fire isn't real. It's just a That's a optical illusion. Yeah, it's a fancy Christmas <laughs> it's roll, a it's if, a realistic Christmas decoration. If you roll so I don't through, remember you the pattern that. for this, but I think I have it actually. It's w, oh, w S A E W W. Yeah. yeah. It's the only so one I don't picking remember. Lots that, the two A's again, the if before you get to the second A you have to press a different direction before the second A registers. So it's like W, S, A, and then you, well, you tap each button until the lock goes. So you're W, S, A, and then you press something else, and then you go back to the A. Trick it, or to get it to go. And here you go, there's that bomb that we came out here to disable. That lock pick takes like 12 seconds to unpick. It's like Almost a whole percentage of the run is spent picking that one lock. Maybe it's not a whole. <laughs> it's greater than one tenth of. I'll tell you that. Oh gosh. I just spotted somebody I in the auditorium. I just reloaded at the worst time. <laughs> no, don't pick up the body. Uh, I also meant to turn the valve the before. Objects. I also meant to turn the valve after picking up those objects, so that will throw the strat off in the room coming up a little bit. Uh, we'll see if it yeah, works you're out. activate activating that breaker there to uh, open a oh, or be able to open a door in the future, as Lambert and Grimm's are have already mentioned. I found him in Q. So I just headed up here to this sort of office-looking area. You're going to find a computer, and you're going to use that to open the doors to Ivan. And Ivan is, of course, the computer programmer who has the encryption key, I guess. Um, so this part is actually kind of scary. These two guards that I ran past just a bit ago can shoot you while you're in this cutscene. <laughs> so yeah, you can die during cutscenes in this game. Because again, the game's about stealth. So ideally, in every cutscene, no one's seen you. But uh, in the speed run, we just sort of hope that no one catches up. 
Don't ollie ollie oxen free me. <laughs> <laughs> that line is ollie nonsensical. Ollie free. <laughs> oh. I mean, how many times have you heard someone call you with ollie ollie oxen free? <laughs> I mean, you just gotta chime up like, hey, I'm over here. Yeah, so there's another elevator here. You can take it to the next uh, area three. I usually use it to reload my gun, use med kits and stuff like that. And then final area here, um, great rooftop escape. Fun fact, I fell through the elevator floor once. Oh yeah. Um, I still have a clip of a, that somewhere. It was a disaster. <laughs> Had to do like all of that last area again. Died. Uh, I accidentally pressed E and start W. That's fine. Yeah, jumping over those walls is, uh, intended. Somewhat. Actually, I think I can throw a grenade here and that'll work. You are supposed to jump over the walls here, because this is an un under construction area. So you are doing nice. a bit I got of that, platforming. those two guards, so I can just split through here. That's so you are supposed to can... do over here, to, uh, surviving these gunfights here. Oh, that might miss. I'll try throwing it over there. And that did not hit them at all. <laughs> so ideally, I take these two guards out with grenades and then just blitz through this area. There we go. Oop, I bonked the wall. That's fine though. Here we go. This is this is shots fired marathon here. This quintessential shooting some dudes who are shooting back. This isn't yeah. shots fired. I don't know what is. <laughs> oh, drunk camera. Nice. <laughs> Why? So if you let the mouse pad off the camera, or mouse mouse off the mouse pad in a certain way, you can actually just send the camera flying, and it's really annoying. Really weird. I don't know why that happens. Yeah. I'd be like more annoying on high DPI mice, like the one I use. This poor guard using the ladder. <laughs> Just vulnerable for that whole time. You see Junior Wilkes over here getting into a shootout. Rip. No, Junior Wilkes. <laughs> Alright, we totally end the mission uh, exactly how you're supposed to here. Oh, so you have to do this at a certain angle and kind of delay the split jump so you actually make it like that. Yeah, again, small kicks in this game, they're, they're kind of difficult to wrap your head around. But to uh, grasp, sort of. Mm-hmm. But once you understand them, you can get a whole bunch of like interesting, interesting out of bounds and unintended jumps. Yeah, really speaking nice. of those out of bounds, we're doing another one here. Uh, you see what you'll see why they got rid of the wall kicks and like future Splinter Cell. Yeah, if only it existed. Yep, yep. If only it existed in Conviction. <laughs> you got to play the game the intended way. Yeah, so uh, Burma, this mission, again, you can't kill anyone here. It's pretty much just like the CIA, except these guards have insane weapons. Um, if you get shot by them, you're dead like in a second. <laughs> Unless you get lucky. Mm -hmm. And again, the art, the guards game, the art, oh my gosh, hello? The guards aim in this game is uh, pretty much just up to them. Like, they can miss you if they want to, or they can hit you if they want to. If they can, if they see you once, they can see you in complete darkness. Um, 
fun stuff like that. We should deal with any of that because you're, you're just not going to be seen by these guards for the most part. So yeah, to get those three guards, I shock two of them with the sticky shocker in the water and then knock out the third one. Yeah, if you shoot sticky shockers into the water, you shoot you know, shock anyone in it. Got a application of good old chemistry principles while you're in this dank sewer here with bad sewer air. It's not good for your lungs. But well, luckily, we'll get some fresh air in a second. Oh, uh, never mind, I guess. <laughs> you need some fresh car, maybe. So again, as Lambert was saying at the beginning of this uh, level, you're supposed to get find a contact who's at the top of this large building, but uh, another special Overshot jump it. There we go. will allow us to jump around the building and not actually oh, have to get... Sam, please. <laughs> there we go. Not actually have to talk to that guard. Right cool day in April. Alright, so this is a really tricky part. We have to get past these guards, and from what I can tell, there's no consistent way to get it. Besides just running through it as quickly as you can. But I got a second try there. What I like to do is hide behind the... Yeah. It's just kind of tricky. It's one of those things where it's hard to grasp when you're learning it. Yeah. If you run fast, they just don't see you for some reason. Alright. What was it? Something moved. Yeah, I like to run around the corners of those two objects, the corner of the building and the corner of the billboard, in order to avoid being seen by the guard. Because what seems to happen if you get caught is you get caught by the first guard you run past in that little bit. Yeah, these embassy grounds are Oh my god, are you chaotic. serious, dude? I have to load the auto save. Uh no. This is fine. Oh no. <laughs> I saw I saw the quick save and that guard aim up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah. The uh embassy grounds is kind of kind of chaotic. Again, you can't have you can't shoot anyone and you can't have any alarms going on while you're on the uh while you're on the grounds, otherwise they're on the mission. So like you mm -hmm. pretty you're pretty much constrained in like most most things that you can do. So, still. So that's what the game wants you to do, but we don't want to do that. So you also have this dog. Uh, you can kill the dog. Um, I don't kill the dog. I don't, do you kill the dog? I do not. Okay, I don't kill the dog. Franker Z gets to live today. Yeah, unless Franker Z decides you, to you kill me kill during the, the cutscene, which can't happen. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the other part about this. Um, if that dog gets alerted, he'll alert the guard. Oh. If that dog alerts. If that dog gets alerted, the guard will also be alerted. The dog is um, But if that dog and guard get alerted, they'll the dog will follow you here if you don't go into the water. Uh, if you go in, you go into the water to get the dog off your trail. If you don't go into the water, that dog has a very high chance of following you here, and sniffing you out. So while you're listening to Colonel Farrell. You hear barking and Fisher yelling and pain. You yell and you reload your ball. Quick save. Um. Just listening to Pharaoh here. So we have to do get past this guard. We have to look past, move past him while he's looking up, and it's pretty much random if he decides to look up or not. In that case, he did. Yep. There's another, totally there's a newer strat for this bit, again found by Distro, that doesn't involve that bit of guard RNG, but I don't know how to do it. Nice guard. Yeah, he can be pretty trolly, which he was in my PB. Yeah, he's got like a 60% chance of it. Although it, it feels like it's like 10%. Yeah, but you use that to pass in front of that guard who is uh, obviously not getting paid well enough. And you get over here to the left side of Farron's uh, escort car. Normally you're you're not getting past that guard and you have to wait until Farron is gone. And then all these guards will start walking around. So, and then you pass over. But if you can sneak in front of that guard, 
Ghost, excuse me, in brief, salsa. I had chips with salsa today. Um, get over here, and it saves you all the time that you would have spent waiting for that guard to move out of position. Minus a little bit. But more importantly, it's a time save. Mm -hmm. This thing to prepare off. For all these laser mics, you're recording, I believe it's like certain portions of the, like a certain portion of the dialogue is what you have to listen to, like other parts of it or what actually count. Um, I haven't looked into it too much, but I mean, basically once you're here, you're, you're, you can record the whole thing. Not really any case. You don't want to grab the pipe, otherwise you'll alert the card for whatever reason. It's weird how that works. Also, I'm on yeah. PV pace by about two minutes, so that's nice. fun. Yeah, quick save, quick load to skip the dialogue that uh, prevents things from... Well, if something happens after the dialogue, you quick save, quick load through it if you can. Alright, here's uh, the abattoir. Um, so that's slaughterhouse. Um, we're here to find Nikolods, Yashislav Grinko, most of the heavy hitters, not not Colonel Farrell, and a bunch of American soldiers who have been lined up and ready for execution along what? with a Padre's not couple of oh my prominent. Goodness. There we go. Or prominent Chinese businessmen. This is oh Bali. my god! I quick save in a bad spot. I ordered the guards. Oh no. Uh, I'll just load the autosave. See, that was a uh, Badri that you saw getting shot there. Um, he's placed landmines in this area. You have to put on your thermal vision um, to see them. Um, but of course, in the speedrun, you can just know where they are and avoid them. There's also a spotlight. Uh, if you run this game, I believe if you download it straight off of uh, Steam, the four shadow mode is set to zero, which makes these spotlights invisible. Um, so we set four shadow mode to projector, and you can see these spotlights. I don't know why it's not like that in, in the default, but whatever. So you just go into your .ini files and just enable the spotlight. Just to enhance your spotlighting experience. Otherwise, the spotlight's just in. There's a landmine there. And these, uh, mm, puberty. And these, uh, spotlights here activate, uh, the snipers, they shoot bullets, and the bullets do like 49% of your health. Like, they almost kill you in two shots. Like, they shoot you twice, and you're at like a fraction of health. So yeah, with this cutscene with Grinko, Nikolai's the whole crew, and the satellite, you can actually use the a Ghost Chico, which is basically this game's equivalent of no clip, and place wall mines in this room. So this guard that runs at the end of the cutscene will trigger those wall mines and cause an explosion. <laughs> if I have time after the run, I'll try to show that off, but that's the little thing you can do in this cutscene when you're just fooling around in a casual playthrough. I'm trying to figure out where you are based off of the audio and what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> and that guard, that guard appears out of nowhere. And that guard hurt our footsteps. Not the, not the explosion, but our footsteps. Yeah. Several odd things in this game where, if Sam specifically is making the noise, everyone gets alerted, even though there's like. A whole bunch of other reasons, like you just running around the car park. Like, who is that? Oh my god, I got spotted. It's only Sam. Sam has a peculiar footstep that alerts. Kind of sh strange. See, so yeah, if I haven't already 
mentioned that Avatar, you can shoot as many people as you like, but you can only have three alarms. Okay. I tried going the for a usual... roll there on this event, but it didn't work out. It's the usual spoon of self there. Okay. Three alarms and missions up. Uh oh, there it is again. <laughs> Got my little speed set on me, I hope you. I didn't anticipate this happening. <laughs> what happened? Oh, the phone call. It's fine. Oh, man. the phone. I thought I thought something happened here. So you head into this freezer area. You have to turn on thermal vision. Uh, your other vi modes of vision are pretty much obscured by the cold air. Uh, but thermal vision is how you can see here. It's uh, essentially five rooms. It's like this. Three of them with guards. Where in the heck is he? Oh, he blindsided me on the right. Nice. Oh my god. Are you serious, dude? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> He's too good. Yeah, the guards they are literal. This, they pay these guards well. Yeah, these guards are literal cheaters. And they can see better in this cold air than you can. Yep. It's like... The one time in this game where guards have the, the sight advantage of you is in this freezer. Well, I guess, assuming that you don't have night uh, thermal Oh my god, now, that is the you got really bad time to reload. Right. Yeah, so another thing in this game is you, you're trying to manage the bullets that you have because round of bullets should be the, I mean, it's, it's the shots fired, come on, you, you know about bullets. <laughs> You don't want to run out of bullets in your gun. You don't want to reload at a bad time. Oh, goodness! <laughs> I, I saw I thought I saw thermal vision go off and nothing but white. That's that's essentially what all those rooms look like in that freezer. Just nothing but extremely bright colors or grayscale if you have night vision on. Yeah, so we're just headed down in here to the uh, the slaughterhouse portion. This is where we're gonna find the uh, the prisoners who are lined up for execution. Um, again, so seeing these lights out so these bodies don't get found. I had that happen earlier today while I was doing practice. Yeah, just as a, again as a reminder, you can shoot as many people as you want to, but three alarms will still end this mission. Even though we are like about a hundred yards away from saving like ten people's lives, Lambert will still pull you out. If you activate three alarm. So most of the guards are going to get shot and going to turn off the lights to ensure that their bodies aren't found once we leave the area. And. Unfortunately, in this area, we won't know if the bodies are well hidden until we get to, like, the final open area, like, one room away from the prison. Mm -hmm. So, taking this, taking this carefully to ensure these bodies are hidden. Because if you, if you have the, uh, if you have too many alarms when you go into that room, you're pretty much just doing this entire basement over. Yeah, it's really annoying. Well, I did get an alarm there, but that didn't trigger three alarms, so we're good. Yeah, so he's setting up these wall mines because once you talk to the prisoners, uh, several hostile people will spawn in that hallway and set those wall mines up to blow them up. Uh, most of them up before they get near. So if you don't do that, then you're Alright, hopefully the guards here. Oh, that's. that could be bad, actually. Okay, I'm good. I just need to not die. <laughs> oh my goodness. Red. That could have been Harry. Uh oh. Damn it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I tried make. What I was aiming to do was get over to that one turret I didn't deactivate and die as soon as this dialogue starts in order to skip most. In order to skip all of it. I can go straight to Chinese MC2, but I messed it up. Yeah, if you if you died during this dialogue, you uh, 
you get the mission complete uh, ever so slightly before the mission uh, failed, and that depends on basically how early you die. If you die really early, then the complete comes in. It's like more than likely that you actually get the failed. It's kind of it's kind of tricky, so whatever. I'm on, sir. So we're back in Burma, uh, but this time we can shoot as many people as we want to. And fun thing about this mission is that there's no alarm limit. Oh gosh. So you can activate as many alarms as you want to uh, as well. Let's jump to the. There we go. That jump is tricky. Yes, you can activate as many alarms as you want to. And of course, stipulation that people will respond to the alarm. Oh yeah, my. these jumps off, jumps off the fence railing. You, like, it's it's pretty particular. Like you're just pressing the jump button, like pretty much as soon as Sam's hands like land at his side. Um, just a little bit earlier, later than that, and you're you either don't jump or you go right off the side. So here's my favorite area, section two of the Burma. Re uh, embassy revisit. Section is uh has high potential for going awry, but there are a few safety strategies here. Uh, let's just let the auto save. Oh, <laughs> yeah. In that room there, the guards are shooting at computers. You can uh. You can kind of go across most of that room without being detected, but the two guards who are shooting the computers have a chance of seeing you. The guard who's like right behind you is like terribly blind. Um, but you do still have to worry about the guards who are shooting the computers. They have a... They can pretty much reliably see you. Uh, there is a portion of their dialogue when they're not looking at you, so if you... Once the guard is done, they're, they have their backs pointed at you and you can really go across this room. And you hack into this. You know, we use this computer. And we find information on the uh, Amaricium that they have. Amaricium. Oh, God, double input. They have. So they're making a bomb. We're going to stop them from doing it eventually. This large room here. Um, there's gun turrets here. Um, what you're supposed to do is like nice. Jump I didn't get hit these, at all. That was perfect. You're supposed to like jump along these platforms and shimmy along a pole to get over here behind this gun turret. Um, but we can just run past it and take no damage apparently. <laughs> yeah, if you're lucky, that happens. If you're unlucky, the two guards will come in this room while you're. Waiting to grab this guard to get to the retinal scanner. And they can shoot you while this retinal scanner animation is playing, which can make things a bit hairy. It's pretty, it's pretty special, but we don't get to see it now. Still on PV <laughs> pace, but I lost quite a bit of time because of that auto save reload. As long as you're still on PV pace. This is on pace for like a 123 without loads right now. Yeah, so part three of the embassy here. So I have to edge out of here, otherwise this guard will see me. He saw me anyway, but whatever. I accidentally used one of my sticky shockers, so I had to reload. I meant to save that for a later section. So my favorite part about these guards is that they go from something move. And then American Commander. Oh my god, are you serious, dude? Sam, oh, you no, suck! <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> There's an interesting wall jump there. Also, shouts to K9 Boxing Company. K9 Box. Boxing your K9 since 1959. <laughs> oh my god. Please. I like the guards in this game, they go they go from barely being able to see you to being able to recognize your nationality and occupation. What is that? An American commando! <laughs> how, how do they know I'm American? Like, could be Venezuelan. Oh god, that's not good. Oh man. 
hand. I'm gonna try to shoot. Nice. Ooh, okay, that guard almost triggered an alarm, but I got him just in time. Uh, oh, I, actually, as Ice Blade said, alarms don't matter. But that's fine. Either way, we still yeah, made it. There's no alarm limit. There's no alarm limit. You're only worried about the alarms if, uh, like, because the guards will be alerted. Yeah. So here we go. There's a, a Maristium in these two trucks that are getting fueled. Yeah. Put a stop to this one. Invoke the spirit of Michael Bay. Wait, Michael Bay is still alive, isn't he? We can still invoke his spirit, though. Yep. Yeah, and that guard just randomly trips. Uh, if you use wall mines oh, in that area, uh, the guard will actually get hit by the wall mine during the cutscene and then fall through the map. <laughs> it's pretty great when that happens. <laughs> I haven't figured out how to do that, though. I don't know if there's any wall mines in the area that you could use for that. I don't, I don't think there are any wall mines here. I don't know, maybe Cody. one guard has a satchel thing with a wall in Cody's confirmed a cheater. So we've got we've destroyed the Americium. Now we're headed to uh find Colonel Farone. Who is of course in his office. We have to wait for this guard to um, manually input the code to each of these doors. Now, you are supposed to be using the night vision to look at these um, fingerprints on the door, but the passcodes are the same, you just memorize them. Yeah, also if you have a free scroll mouse you can just let it loose on the elevator button. <laughs> Yeah, so there's uh, three combinations here. Again, you're you're supposed to be using that guard. If you knock out that guard, Lambert will assume that you have no way of knowing the passcode in your mission. So you just you you have to you have to wait for this guard. Another fun thing is if you go into this room, uh, the elevator room, too early, that guard will hop through the elevator walls and shoot you. Oh really? Um, I haven't seen that happen. Yeah, I, I wait a little bit of time so that so that doesn't happen. And yeah, even though these doors are wide open, you still have to input the code. But again, if you don't input the code, Lambert will assume that you don't know how to get that code. So you've proven otherwise. I'm gonna try to do a swag strat here and get on the chairs, which I got. It doesn't really save any time, but it lets me get Farong a little easier. Oh, swag is like the most important most important yeah. part of speed one. Yeah, exactly. I thought I, I I figured everyone knew that. Yeah. And most of the times you're doing things. You're killing like me. That time, being swaggy. Nice. I actually got him really close to the computer. Yeah. You want to get him close to the computer and minimize your walking time. Have him log into Discord. See all that silly stuff. You put. Anyway, um, it's time to get out of the uh, embassy. Explosions here. There's one explosion that you can run through it and take like 40% damage off of. There you go. Oops. Hit the wrong button there. I meant to hit my night vision. So and if you just run up against that level the game? so if you just hold forward when going off that ledge, you'll take no fall damage. You would die from that fall normally if you didn't do that. Yeah, it's pretty nice. You hit like this slope portion which doesn't register as a platform that Sam can die off of. Alright, here we go. Impossible jump! Yeah. Nope. Yeah, the impossible jump is impossible. Just thought I'd clarify that for you. Can't be done. It can't be done. Oh, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> you did the impossible jump. Nice. So you're just doing some parkour here. This is the last level of the game. I want to get you to do some parkour. Oh, yeah. Go into yeah, lots of fighting. Is, yeah, this is the mini impossible jump. Yeah. Slight like jump is weird. Like, 
There's like two safe areas, and right in between the safe areas to jump is like this dead area. We just slide off the side and die. Yeah. If you're actually if you actually the time the wall kick at the beginning of the level wrong, you can wall kick off the off the side of the level and die. Oh yeah, I've done that a few times. Mm -hmm. Me too. That was embarrassing. I've done deal. So I wait for an audio cue there just to ensure that I don't get caught by the dogs. It usually works a lot of the time. This level here is pretty difficult. These guards all have like super powerful weapons. They have these amazing. Uh oh, cats, the which... dog is right next to the railing. I meant to jump on top of that. Actually, it's fine. That could have been scary though. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, um, this, this is, is fine. Dog. This is fine. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was a that was a that was a save. You know? <laughs> These dogs. I am not making this jump today. <laughs> there we go, finally. Since I ordered the... Yeah, the guard's gonna shoot at me. I have to kill him. There we go. Take a seat. So you just hop over this fence and sort of skip... Well, you're skipping most of the running in this courtyard, but mostly you're skipping the fence code. That's in the middle of this hedge maze. Mm -hmm. uh, the code is 2126. Uh, you get it off the satchel in one of the guards. From one of the guards. Um, but again, inputting codes oh, into the uh, slow. Top over this fence portion here. When you top over that fence, the other parts of the, the gate can't hop over. Oh, got an orange, but that's fine. You These cards can be kind of difficult to deal with because they, there's like four of them all in a line. They can take away a ton of your health. Alright, they didn't take too much there. And they, of course, are random. Mm-hmm. Well, let's push his aim. Uh-oh, speaking the speaking of randomness, we are coming up on the lottery room. Oh, the lottery room. I love the lottery room. <laughs> oh, and it already didn't go well. Okay. I have to see this lottery room here. Okay. So again, you're supposed to be stealthy here. Uh, we don't have time for this. We're just going to round these guards up and shoot okay, them. Okay, then. I did not see that guard next to me. <laughs> oh, god, okay. That's kind of monk ass. Um, yeah, I'm kind of... Putting a... <laughs> He's like right in front of you. Yeah, again, all these guards have like super hot, powerful weapons. They pretty much kill you in like one second. They can get like a line of sight on you. You're like dead within a second. Okay. Of course, they have impeccable aim. <laughs> Fishers is. Yeah, what makes aiming what makes aiming in this room so hard is because after a certain amount of time, after a certain amount of time, the the aim will sway a little bit, and that weapon sway is kind of annoying to deal with. Yeah, so, like, you have the normal, like, non-zoomed-in aiming, which has, like, the built-in, like, error in it. Um, you can then look through the sights, and you get, like, a pretty accurate, pretty accurate shot, but it moves on its own. Um, and then you hold the right mouse button to, uh, hold your breath, which steadies the aim for, like, five seconds or so, and after that five seconds you have to take a breath. So we're here to get vital information from this desk. You need to get you need to get this before you can go to the final area of the game. Of course there's a code that you need to get to open the door there. And activating these lasers will raise an alarm and draw like five guards into this office room. I don't avoid that. So where are these guards? Okay, they're not anywhere near that. All right. Well, I accidentally made them suspicious. That could be. Actually, that's fine. All right. I'm gonna try to sneak past this guard by doing the crouch glitch. And I triggered an alarm, so that's a nope. We'll just sticky. We'll just air foil ring him. All right. That's that. Uh oh. 
It's fine. <laughs> and again, three alarms will end you in this mission. Mm -hmm. Game over in this mission. And there's also a whole lot of guards coming up, so you could just die very easily. So yes. I so I wait for these two guards to walk past before I shoot this light. That's the first one. Where's the second one? All right, there's the second one. There we go. Hey. Oh, this could be problematic. That guard was all the way over there. Uh, okay, let's try now. Okay, they did not see me, which is good. Yeah, you have the option of sneaking into this elevator here. Uh, if you kill, if you kill one of those guards, you will, you can still get an alarm, but that alarm's like after you're done with this library room here. Take this time to like reload and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and you're supposed to like deal with the guards that come into this library, but you can sort of run past them. Mm -hmm. Go directly into the vault. Find Nikolaj. So down the here. vault is one of the. It's probably the most stressful part of the game when you play it casually, because there's a whole lot of guards you have to try to get past in order to get up. And to it's the... impossible casually. Yeah, it's really <laughs> it's really hard. So you have but... like five guards in this room. They all have night vision, and you can you got to use night vision, and they have also impeccable aim and high power weapon. Yeah, but we can kind of Pretty break crazy. this escape sequence by quick saving, quick loading a bunch to skip the dialogue. That gives you a little head start as soon as the blackout happens. Yeah, look at that cloth bouncing. Alright, let's see what we get. Let's see if they rapid fire their machine guns. <laughs> I have med kits, so it's not a big deal. And it looks like they did. That's not a big deal. I just have to get out of here. Okay. Even, even. So even I actually got kit. stuck there for a second. I was worried I would have been straight up killed. <laughs> <laughs> Even with a med kit, that part's pretty difficult. Yeah. Even if you're full health, right. you can just get killed almost instantly. You just get destroyed. Mm -hmm. Alright, Nikolaus is getting away. We gotta, we gotta catch him. Alright, hopefully this guard doesn't see me. It looks like he... Actually, that would've been fine. Sometimes that guard can be in a pattern where he stands still at the balcony. In that case, he turned around. If he was standing around on the balcony, I would have just waited a bit. Shoutouts to this balcony with the uh, convenient box of ammo here. Yeah, we don't actually Perfect use it for, because uh, we have enough ammo. <laughs> just in case uh, any prospective spy wants to overthrow an evil dictator by sniping through the window, there's a box of ammo for you. So this part can be kind of stressful. If you mess up this manipulation, the guards can just outright murder you when you try to get to the final door. And when I hit that door and the ending cutscene starts, by the way, that is f time. So that is a PB by two minutes, 122.17 without loads. <laughs> Good job, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. So if we still have time, I would like to show off that wall mine trick in Abator that I was talking about. If we have time for it, that is. If you want to move on to the next game real quick, that's fine too. But if I have time for it, I'd like to try and show it off. Oh, by the way, just so you know that I actually PB'd. There you go. There's the splits. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I just got the okay. So, I mentioned that wall mine trick in Aptor. Well, here it is in action. So we have to use the ghost cheat. In order to get to where we need to go here, which is that meeting room that Nick Lads and the whole crew were in earlier. 
It's kind of hard to find it from out of bounds, but it's actually just over here. Uh, yeah, here we go. Whoop, I accidentally quick saves. Interesting. <laughs> okay, so we clip into this room with no clipping. I'm gonna put these two wall mines here. And then go, whoops, and then go back to hit the switch that we hit earlier to progress the mission. It's kind of hard to find when you go in that room and have to go out of bounds to find it again. Fun fact, by the way, I've actually done a meme category of this game where I use the ghost cheat code to teleport to the end of every checkpoint. <laughs> and it was an event. It was an adventure, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, so here's the cutscene, the abridged version. Goes to the end of the level. Peak speed running cosmic brain there. <laughs> Let's decorations in this room. Mm -hmm. Christmas, Christmas decorations. Yep. <laughs> and there you go. I've actually had at one point where one of those guards somehow lives from the explosion, which is interesting. Oh but yeah, that's about all I had. You can cut me off whenever, and 